This is a nice cup of Bentley Earl Grey tea. That's going to be the most amount of sophistication that's going to be in, in these reviews. This is a two-header. <sighs> Sorority House Massacre 2 and Cheerleader Massacre 1. Now they're not connected. You know, don't 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 get the two of them confused. They're they're just both um similar styles of movies. They both have five women, they both have lots of nudity, they both have horrible acting and a fairly lame killer. So I'll go Sword House Massacre 2. So five girls buy a place for a new sorority house. And it's a place where murders happened like five years ago. So of course, what do you do in a house that is a former murder house? Well, of course you take showers, but there's no hot water. And then you drink tequila while playing a Ouija board all in your lingerie. That's what most normal women do. You know, they, they take really long showers, but there's no hot water. Then they take time to put on lingerie, maybe even have conversations while being topless. And then they decide to sit on the floor of the house they've just bought that they really haven't even cleaned yet, drink, and play with the Ouija board. And then they all began to get killed one after another. At least the cops are on the case, and they actually go talk to the woman who survived the first massacre. And of course, wouldn't you know it, she's a stripper. So you gotta go to a strip club to continue that. That's essentially that movie right there. It's, um, I believe the tagline for the movie. Now, I am not making this up. It's cleavage versus cleavers, and the result is Delta Delta Deadly. Okay, there's that one. <sighs> now, I'm going to go to Cheerleader Massacre. This is actually supposed to be like the fourth movie in a franchise called Slumber Party Massacre. But why they decided to change it and make it about cheerleaders, it, essentially it's five cheerleaders who go on a weekend get away with their coach. And again it has nudity. Because after they do their opening cheer session, which is crappy, they of course have to take a shower and comment about sleeping with some dude, how he's got a really small unit. And then they go out into the middle of nowhere for like, with, you know, some of these like sex crazed guys. And then they all begin to die in really, really lame ways. All I really need to say about these two movies is this. Sorority House Massacre is so bad, it's actually, it's actually funny how bad it is. And of course, one of the actual kind of unique things about Sword House Massacre. This is one of those bizarre fun facts. That was written and shot in seven days. When you watch it, it has that look. Like every single time you're seeing a scene, it was cut once. It was featured once. It's like they went, all right, here we go. And scene. Huh? That's great. That's what's going to be in the movie. Cheerleader Massacre has even worse acting, and the women aren't as attractive. Why did I combine the two? Because there are people who actually try to uh, try to put all the, you know, sorority, cheerleader, slumber, massacres into one giant thing. Essentially, they're, they're TNA horror flicks. Out of the two, I would recommend Sorority House Massacre. You better looking women. And the plot is laughable. Cheerleader Massacre... You have a longer plot, and you know what? It's equally as laughable. The women turn is good looking. So. Remember, I had a nice cup of Bentley Earl Grey tea while I discussed these things with you.